on the last day of their trip to Columbia. The Duke and Duchess of York have met up with Afro-Caribbean leaders. Uh, they've met Colombia's first black vice president. Their visit has been defined by cultural and social causes in line with their focus on the um, Archwell Foundation, the, the, the charities they've uh, developed and the and, and and the sort of cultural interests that they share. So surrounded by drums, saxophone, marimbas, poetry, they joined a forum called Afro Women and Power. And the Duchess of Sussex has said, I can feel this embrace from Colombia. It's incredible. Thank you very much. She spoke in Spanish. She also speaks French. And, you know, it's a, it, it, it seems, frankly, a big step away from the rather formal royal visits of the past. To restore dignity to ethnic peoples to promote the welfare of women, of children, of adolescents, said the Vice President, and it's, it's a positive message. But within all this is the negative gripe that it is impossible for Prince Harry to get away from his family. That family is too important, too significant, and he is defined by it. it. It really is time for members of that family to get around a table and sort this out, because Harry and Meghan are showing the way to do things in a way that other members of the family really are not. And it's, it's certainly time to sit up and notice. And, and among other things, this was a trip which was fraught with diplomatic and security dangers. And uh, Harry and Meghan have embraced those and negotiated those with aplomb with a dignity that is becoming of their status as members of the royal family. As I say, I think, I think it's time the family put its heads together and sorted this out. Uh, it's, not, um, it's not that Harry needs them, it's that they need him and Meghan and this fracture cannot continue, particularly when there are other problems in the family. This needs to be resolved. Anyway, just a last thought before bed and a tribute to a really good trip and a, a, a positive trip. And for the, for the record, I um, I, I don't think it's the role of any uh, of any current leader to be apologising for the past. Apologies are just words. What we need to do, if we have things to make up for, is to make up for them. Is to find some way to um, turn the present into something more positive. Charlie Gladstone set an example by funding projects to to atone for the for his family's role in slavery but you know that that is one way of doing it the better way i think is to think about the future rather than to focus on apologizing for the past the past is done the past is full of mistakes and we need to turn from the past and look at the future. We can't be constantly looking at the past.
we need to create a better future together. All of us, actually. All of us. We need to focus on the future and try and contribute something positive um, so that future generations can look back. It's not for us to be looking back. It's for us to be looking forward. Future generations can indulge in history. We need to be making history. We can't spend our time looking over our shoulders and, um, and regretting. There's plenty to regret. If we're not regretting this, we're regretting that. Now is the time to be using that information to set things right.